This week, it's dire distress in the U.S. And internationally, the news isn't much better. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape Global 20 Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the week ending September 12th, 2021. You know, the previous video I uploaded two weeks ago was just an oversimplification of how the PMTA road has already decimated vaping in the United States. But even that video comes far short of accurately describing what's going on. The FDA's most current list of marketing denial orders has 125 companies listed as of September 10th. The list is almost too unbearable to read, but includes names like Victory Liquid, Victory Liquid, Nasty Worldwide, Nude Nicotine, Sad Boy, Midwest Vape Supply, American Vapor Group, Walker Enterprises, and many, many others. What's the most baffling of all is companies like Nude Nicotine and Midwest Vape Supply were denied unflavored products. So say goodbye to Sapphire Nick Shots and unfa unflavored base liquids. Actually, of all the sources reviewed for this week's news report, Beijing-based Sohu.com is the most accurate for saying, no e-cigarette products in the United States are legally licensed for marketing. TaiwanSina.com documents the global carnage caused by the FDA's actions. 43% plunge overnight. The e-cigarette industry is bleeding and the giants can't hold it. Last night, the e-cigarette industry blood flowed into the river. FDA rejects largest U.S. e-cigarette application distributor. Shares plunge more than 40%. As a result of this, E-cigarette distributor Cavill Brands share price plunged 43.27% last night, and U.S.-based Mist Core Technologies plunged 16.8%. The article continues with four Chinese companies will be denied entry into the United States, and Hong Kong intends to introduce legislation to ban e-cigarettes in general. On September 10th, the Legislative Council Smoking Amendment Bill Committee met to complete the deliberations on the amendment to ban the use of heated tobacco and e-cigarettes. And the ordinance will resume its second reading in the Legislative Council next month, with the government looking forward to passing the bill before the end of the current legislative session at the end of October. Once passed, the bill is likely to affect Hong Kong's transit function as an e-cigarette export for overseas markets. I'm not making this shit up, people. Sig Magazine headline is, E-cigarettes, FDA asked for more time. So far, no approved product. FDA postponed the decision on the big players like Juul. Despair in the American vaping sector that is in danger of disappearing. Meanwhile, British American Tobacco's Views becomes the number one global vaping brand. Announced on September 8th, British American Tobacco announced that Views is now the number one global vaping brand by value share. Views is the category value share leader in four of the top five vapor markets. Canada, France, Germany, and the UK. And BAT's strong U.S. momentum in vapor means Views is now leader by value share in 22 states. But now that the U.S. FDA has essentially vaporized all vape companies in the U.S., it won't be long before BAT adds the U.S. and claims itself the leader of all top five vapor markets around the globe. Yeah, I know. I had some guy come up to me and say, but dude, I stopped at my local vape shop and they said not to worry about it because they're just going to keep selling no matter what. 
Worst case scenario, all the liquids are going to switch to synthetic nicotine. Yeah, that's fine and dandy. But the fact is, they're illegally selling you a product that does not have marketing orders in the United States. And they are also required by law to report that information to the ATF. So how long you think it'll be before the ATF decides to make an example of some shop somewhere and all of its customers? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that, you know, they're gonna throw these people in jail, but realistically, every single one of these transactions is not legally required to be documented, just like if you were buying a handgun, just what the lawyers love. Plenty of documentation for all their court hearings. And it's not going to the FDA, who admits that they will work as quickly as possible to provide regulatory certainty and is prioritizing enforcement of e-cigarette products that have not applied for FDA authorization. Yeah. Look at all the freaking portable and disposable flavored vape products that are technically illegal in this country. Does the FDA have the manpower, the enforcement authority to actually do something about it? No, they're just going to keep wiping more products off the market. Makes total sense, doesn't it? What was once thought of is moving the vape industry from the gray area into a legal tested product that is safe for adults to consume all across the nation has now had the FDA deem all these items to the black market. And they're all considered black market products with legally required documentation of all purchases of illegal products. Let's be honest, folks. This has been a pooch screw from the get go. Going all the way back to May 10th, 2016, when the FDA issued the final rule extending its tobacco product authority to all tobacco products. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Jim McDonald wrote an article, a great article, about the history of the FDA vaping regulations just last month. And there's going to be a link to it. It was published at Vaping 360. Go check it out if you have no idea what I'm talking about. The whole PMTA process was a sham to bureaucratically ban vaping. It's not about science or product safety or benefits to the public health like the FDA claims. You know, one might argue that many of these small vape companies simply didn't invest enough to prove that their products were safe or a benefit to the public health. Well, let me ask you this question. How much does it cost to get a product past the PMTA process? You know, I smirkingly posted on Twitter news about Juul building a research facility and hiring 35 full-time scientists and researchers to keep proving their products are appropriate for public health. But did you know that American Apollo e-cigarette spent $25 million to submit PMTAs for 250 products, of which three of them were the actual device? And the rest were for different flavorings. And they got an MDO for all of it. $25 million they spent to complete the application process. And the FDA just... Done. Bye. Sorry. No letter of, oh, well, you need to add this. Oh, this is missing from it. Whatever happened to the FDA is supposed to assist companies that have less than X number of employees and give them a project manager to assist them in moving the PMTAs through the process. Everybody's tight-lipped about it on the supply end of things. But here, us, the consumers, have visually seen the industry decimated. Except most people are too stupid to realize it. And most vape shops are not being honest with their customers. Yes, we intend to keep vaping no matter what. There's no question about it. It's the right thing to do. But let's be real. 
93% of the vape market has just been obliterated in the United States. And yes, I know that you could, they can keep selling around the rest of the world, but the United States was one of the biggest consumers of vaping products in the globe. The damage is done. As it looks right now, only tobacco and menthol flavored products might get approved by the FDA. And if you vape anything other than tobacco and menthol, now is the time to stock up and learn how to do DIY because it gets even worse. I reported on this previously, but it's getting serious now. Federal tobacco taxes are set to double and smokeless tobacco taxes are set to increase 1,600%. A one liter bottle of 100 milligram nicotine for DIY, which one caught, excuse me, which one's cost about $50, is now selling in excess of $100. And if this tax passes, and once again, it's slid into an infrastructure bill because they know it wouldn't pass on its own. And a $100 bottle, that one liter bottle, is going to have over $5,000 of tax assessed on that one liter bottle. Tell me how that's not going to grow a black industry, a black market industry. If this tax passes, the five liters that you bought for the vape apocalypse could be worth over $25,000 a year from now in just taxes alone. Guess it's time to get a safe to put your freezer into. <sighs> Sorry, this has just got me so fired up. I just, and then with being sick on top of it, lovely. All right. Moving on, moving on to South Africa where their new cigarette and vaping laws won't do what they say on the packet. Philip Morris, South Africa is fighting the draft control and tobacco products and electronic delivery systems bill, which treats less harmful products equally with combustible tobacco. 100% prohibition in all public areas. In order for you to use a vape or to smoke, you are only going to be allowed to do that in private. Yeah. Interesting how PMI is just now getting into the regulatory fight to treat less harmful products differently than lighting tobacco on fire. Moving on to Australia. Once again, if you live in Australia and you vape, you must get a prescription for nicotine before October 1st. Anyone caught with nicotine or trying to import nicotine without a valid doctor's prescription will be subject to a massive fine. And customs will be stopping all packages at the border. So if you try and order something, you don't have a prescription. Not only is your product not going to get to you, but they're going to come after you to fine you for trying to import nicotine into the country without a prescription. With all the bad news from around the globe, it's no wonder shares in vape brands continue to drop day by day. Moving on to Manila, where on Monday, their Senate resumed deliberations on proposed legislation regulating the use, importation, and sale on vaporized nicotine products and e-cigarettes. Under the proposed bill, vaping will be allowed in designated areas where there are no minors present. Are we ever going to be allowed anything besides second-class citizen status? Well, not as long as social media misinformation about vaping is harmful for smokers. The majority of adults Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube is the first source of health-related information. And as long as these social media platforms continue to push the ubiquity of inaccurate, misleading, and outright false information, people's health choices and their very lives will continue to suffer. 
Caroline Wright and Andy Tan writes, As public health and tobacco control researchers, we are also concerned about the adverse impacts of inaccurate information that e-cigarettes are just as or more harmful than smoking on smokers. This misinformation can deter cigarette smokers from lowering their health risks by switching to e-cigarettes completely and thus lowering the harms of exposing their loved ones to secondhand smoke exposure. There's general agreement among medical experts that the short-term health benefits of e-cigarettes are considerably lower than smoking regular cigarettes. Although the long-term risks and benefits are not known because it hasn't been around for but 15 years, the CDC advises that e-cigarettes have the potential to benefit adult smokers if used as a complete substitute for regular cigarettes and other smoked tobacco products. Until recently, we knew little about misinformation, about how misinformation affects smokers' perceptions about trying e-cigarettes. Yeah, I love how these scientists say that they'd have no idea what's going on around it. It's common sense. Well, they conducted the first randomized control trial of its kind and found that cigarette smokers were less likely to purchase e-cigarettes after being briefly exposed to tweets falsely saying that e-cigarettes are as harmful or more harmful than smoking. What a joke. Well, the study consisted of 2,400 U.S. and U.K. adult cigarette smokers, and they found that social media misinformation convinced these people not to purchase or even try a vape because of the perceived harm or perceiving that vaping was more harmful than smoking. Light something on fire and breathe that in versus something that is controlled and based on water. I mean, it's water soluble versus the tar that comes out of smoke. How is it so hard for people to understand common sense? I'm sorry, I'm getting off topic here. The article continues with public health agencies should advise smokers that they, that although e-cigarettes are not completely harmless, the current evidence shows that short-term health risks from using e-cigarettes are considerably lower than smoking regular cigarettes. Quit lines, over-the-phone coaching by counselor to help quit smoking, mobile apps and web-based tools for cessation and smoking cessation campaigns should consistently share accurate information about the relative harms of smoking versus switching completely to e-cigarettes. If a smoker is unable or unwilling to quit. When I smoked and I loved smoking, I didn't want to quit. I was doing it because I wanted to improve the situation for my family, my friends. I knew it was bad for my health, but I enjoy it. Well, this lets you enjoy the habitual characteristics of smoking, but be 95% safer. So if you're a smoker, you need to try this. And you might find that, oh, I don't know why it was so hard to quit smoking. This is so much easier. That's why random science, random controlled trials have been done to prove this is magnitudes better at quitting, at helping people quit the nicotine replacement therapy. I'm sorry, folks. I know that this isn't the normal Global 20 News report, but I'm still not back to 100%. I woke up once again this morning. My sinuses are congested. Thank God I'm not sneezing like I have been, but it is what it is. All right, moving on. Cigarette smoking is the leading cause of preventable death, causing 7 million deaths per year worldwide. And social media's influence on smokers' misperceptions about e-cigarettes 
are going to mean that they're going to continue to be smoking and they're going to continue to be harmed by the cigarette smoke. So, Carolyn Wright and Andy Tan are both senior research fellows. Carolyn Wright is a senior research associate at the Cancer Center Research UK, Population Research Postdoctoral Fellow at Bristol Medical School in the University of Bristol, England. Andy Tan is a senior fellow at the Leonard Davis Institute of Health Economics at the University of Pennsylvania and an associate professor at the Anberg School for Communication. These are their statements. There's a link in the description below if you don't believe me and you want to read the actual arguments. This is based on science. But people just don't seem to care. The misinformation and the Bloomberg billions that he spent lobbying to get rid of harm reduction products because he wants them treated the same as combustible tobacco has had consequences. And we're going to see them come into high gear here shortly. All right. Let's go take a look at New Zealand. How's New Zealand doing? New Zealand used to be considered, in my book, the pinnacle of tobacco harm reduction. Right? Well, if you've been following the news, been following this channel, you know that they just implemented a whole new bunch of regulations limiting the flavors to specialized vape stores, right? Okay, nice compromise. Got to protect the kids from having access to it, even though that's not where they're going to get it from. But okay. Yeah. You know that they're under a lockdown, right? Oh, you don't? Yeah, well... New Zealand's under a lockdown situation for COVID again. According to Nancy Lucas, ex-smokers are going back to smoking cigarettes because they can't have access to the flavors they need to keep on vaping. The article goes, by now we all know the stress and boredom caused by COVID lockdowns. But Kiwis are also facing brand new retail restrictions on vape products, which adds additional burdens on ex-smokers who must now find a specialty vape shop to access their safer harm reduction products. We talked about Nancy Lucas before. She's the co-director of the Aotearoa Vapors Community Advocacy. And she points out in their wisdom, legislators have made the most popular vape flavors less available. In doing so, they have effectively made tobacco products more available, particularly during the lockdown. Auckland, is completely closed down on alert level four while the rest of the country is in alert level three, which only allows specialized vape shops to provide contactless click and collect products. Meaning Kiwis can still go to the supermarket or service stations to purchase smokes as readily as ever. Just like in this country, every single gas station and convenience store has cigarettes available for sale. But if you want, you know, harm reduction products to help you quit smoking? Well, you got to find a specialized vape store. Vape mail bans. Well, sorry, that that access road is closed for you, except for the, the shops, the few that are left. But then you got to wait for it. Do you have to wait for cigarettes? Do you have to order cigarettes from a specialized vape store? No, they're listed and sold everywhere. Yes, I'm angry and I'm upset and distraught over this because this is utterly preposterous. In the free world, never in my wildest dreams would I imagine that if somebody came up with something that made quitting to smoke this easy, it should be sold everywhere and it shouldn't be taxed. Yeah, maybe some regular sales tax. But no, none of this other BS sin tax. How is this a sin if it empowers you to quit smoking? Getting back to New Zealand. I'm sorry. I'm just furious. Heartbroken, distraught. 
Yeah. Everybody in the industry right now is up in arms. Because those that truly are passionate about it know where the industry stands today. The few companies, the 7% of the 6.5 million products that were submitted are still waiting for results. They're not gonna completely ban it. But looking at the research I did for everything, it's quite obvious. The FDA is not going to approve a single flavored product. So if you want flavors, Time for you to place an order. I got more flavorings from Bull City Flavor in. Got a couple new recipes I want to try. So look for some new videos on the channel. I'm going to skip over the rest of this stuff. There's a link in the description below. Because New Zealand used to be the pinnacle. And now here they are. Passing regulations to protect the kids. Except now every single adult that's stuck in lockdown. If you don't have a inventory or a stock of harm reduction products. What are they going to do? If they can't totally completely resist the cravings. They're going to go down to the corner store and pick up a pack of smokes. And lose all the progress they made. So let's take a look at the UK. What's going on in the UK with harm reduction products? Can't be all bad. UK is the ultimate pinnacle for harm reduction in the world right now, right? So what's going on in the UK? Hundreds of illegal disposable e-cigarettes are seized in North Oxfordshire. People who vape are being warned about the dangers of illegal disposable e-cigarettes after hundreds of such products were found and seized in 13 stores in the Cherwell area. Oxfordshire City Council has become aware of disposable e-cigarettes with a nicotine content of 5% being sold throughout the country. Nicotine inhaling products contain more than 2%. Nicotine are illegal to sell in the UK to comply with safety requirements. Here we go again. Think of the children. Think of the children. Yeah, because kids are going to buy these things. They're going to get a hold of these things because they're doing it to get high. They don't care about what the product was designed to do. They want something. They're going to go and do it. They're going to experiment with it. It's the forbidden fruit. People wonder why Juul has had such a bad name. They were the ones that came out with this 5% nicotine, 50 milligrams per milliliter. The highest concentration when I first thought about taking up vaping, I think was like 48 milligram. And that was your DIY mix base that wasn't intended for direct vaping. 24 was the most that the stores around here had. Whatever. Even the UK, they recognize the benefits of harm reduction. Bad actors are looking to make a profit and they're going to sell the products whether they're legal or not. It's basic economics. Make anything illegal, it's not going to change the way bad actors are going to behave. If anything, it's going to encourage them to sell more products because now you shifted the economic side of the picture that they're the only ones that have available products for sale. And you know what? I got the perfect story for you. The perfect situation to prove a point. So let me ask you this question, all right? Why do airplanes still have ashtrays? I mean, seriously, smoking on airplanes was banned decades ago. So why do planes still have ashtrays? You can't say because the plane, you know, was that, was that old. Yeah, there might still be some out there. But brand new planes that come off the assembly line still have ashtrays. You want to tell me why? The answer is really simple. The ashtrays are there to safely put out a cigarette for any smoker who might have accidentally lit up. One response to the query was from another flight attendant. 
is because people will try to break the rules. We prefer that they use ashtrays to hide their cigarettes instead of causing a fire hazard by hiding it in a small corner. The United States Federal Aviation Administration said the requirement for the presence of an ashtray on or near the laboratory door provides a convenient disposable location, disposal location for cigarettes or other smoking material and thereby ensures that there is a place to dispose of such material in the event that the no smoking policy is not adhered to. Previous experience and reports have shown that there is a high probability that these persons may deposit a lighted smoking material in the laboratory paper or linen receptacle when no safe and convenient place to dispose of it exists. Such actions can result in an in-flight fire aboard an aircraft. Smoking has been banned in the toilets on many flights since the tragedy in 1973, when 123 passengers died on Varig Flight 820 from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, to the France capital of Paris, Paris, after a cigarette was thrown in the toilet rubbish bin, which naturally caught on fire. Facts are facts, people, and people are going to do what people want to do. No law on earth has ever changed that. Well, that wraps up the Global 20 Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for this week ending September 12, 2021. I truly appreciate every single one of you sticking around, subscribing to this channel, hitting the like button, dislike button, and leaving me comments. I love interacting with people because it's only through discussion, meaningful discussions, that we can all learn from each other and live a better life. Until next week, be good to each other and keep on vaping.